Hi, I'm Chef Nicole. I've been a professional chef in Manhattan and New Jersey for the last 20 years. For the last seven years, I've owned a personal chef and events company where we focus on local, seasonal, and what is best. This week on our show, we will be making steak sandwiches with caramelized onions and a blue cheese sauce. We're gonna make mashed potato souffle with your leftover mashed potatoes. And we're gonna make peach hand pies with refrigerated pie crust and whatever you happen to have in your fruit basket. So we're back and we are gonna start making our steak sandwich. Uh, we have this beautiful leftover steak from dinner the other night and we haven't figured out a way to use it. So I'm gonna show you how to take this single steak, a couple of onions, some fresh thyme, and any cheese that you happen to have in your fridge. I have blue, which I love, and make an amazing new meal out of a steak sandwich. So the first thing that we're gonna do for our sandwich is we're gonna get our onions caramelizing because they take longer than anything else in this recipe. Everything comes, else comes together very quickly. So let me show you the easiest way to chop up an onion. This is the stem end, it grows up out of the ground. This is the root end and this is what holds the entire onion together. Most of the time you do not wanna cut this root end off. You're gonna only cut off the top end. So I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to slice off the top of the onion so that it lays flat. Then I'm going to take my hand and make a bear claw and slice through the root end, never coming near my fingers, and now I have two halves of an onion. This makes it very, very easy to peel your halves. Just like this, we're gonna set our wrappers to the side. And then we are going to very carefully Slice these onions into half moons. I'm gonna set these aside. Now, with your onion flat on the ground, you're going to curve your fingers under so that your knife will be guided by your fingertips. You're going to use a rocking motion and you're going to slice your onion into half moons. When things get a little precarious, you just tip your onion over and you start again. This will give you the maximum amount of onions out of your half onion without any nicks. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish chopping up this onion and then we're gonna get everything into the pan. So we've cut the onions now and we're gonna add them to our pan that we've heated with a little bit of olive oil over about a medium high heat. Um, I'm going to also add in the rest of the onions that I cut earlier. And we're gonna cook these low and slow. The best way to get caramelizing on your onions is to bring out the sugars in the onions and that happens uh, at a very low temperature. We're gonna move these around a little bit just to break up the rings and let them come together and make sure everything is touching the heat if possible. We have a runaway. We're also gonna add some other flavors to this pan. We're gonna add some fresh thyme. I love fresh thyme, it's probably my favorite uh, herb. It is nice and bright. And what we're going to do is we're just going to hold it at the very top and strip it backwards. And that is gonna be the easiest way to get your thyme leaves off of your thyme. So we're gonna add about half of a bunch of, onion, of thyme and let that go in. And then we're also going to add a little bit of lemon zest. Uh, we are not going to add in any salt or pepper yet. Salt brings out the moisture in onions in your food. And if we were to bring the water out of the onions now, it would take that much longer for your onions to cook. And we're looking for a quick, quick meal. So we're not gonna salt our onions yet. We're gonna wait until the end to salt them. So what we're gonna do now, we've got our thyme in the pan. We're gonna add in a little bit of lemon zest. You wanna make sure when you are zesting your lemons that you only get the outer dark yellow. That is the, oil, the where the essential oils are and that's where you're gonna get the most lemon flavor without getting any of that sourness of the lemon juice. Um, you get all of that bright lemony flavor and wanna make sure that we scrape off or tap off the back of your microplane. 
And then again, we're just gonna give these onions a stir and we're just gonna let them cook. It's gonna take about 15 minutes or so to get them cooked all the way down to where we want them to be. Uh, a little bit of browning, a lot of flavor. So while we wait for our onions to finish caramelizing, we're gonna go ahead and start working on our sauce because really what's a sandwich without a sauce, right? So I looked in the fridge and I had a wedge of blue cheese left over. Now, if you don't love blue cheese, you don't have to use it. You can use any cheese that you like. But I happen to love blue cheese and blue cheese shouldn't be sitting lonely in my fridge. So this is a very, very easy sauce that we're gonna pull together and you can change the cheese, you can leave the cheese out, you can add horseradish and anything that you want on your sandwich, that is the beauty of this sauce, it's a base. So we're gonna start with a little bit of mayonnaise and we're going to add a little bit of Dijon mustard. Mayonnaise is great, but it's very rich in that Dijon mustard is gonna break that up and give it a little bit of flavor. Now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add some acid. So I'm gonna take this lemon that we zested for our onions because we don't wanna waste it, and then I'm gonna hold the half lemon over my hand, and I'm going to squeeze the juice out while catching all of the lemon seeds in my hand. We're only gonna use about half a lemon for this. It's nice and juicy. So that lemon is just gonna give your sauce a little bit of viscosity. It's gonna loosen it up a little bit and give it a nice pop of acidity and flavor. Now, I'm not gonna season with salt and pepper yet because we've got this gorgeous blue cheese. And blue cheese tends to be a little salty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our cheese to our sauce, give it a stir, and then decide if we need more salt and pepper. Okay, so we're just gonna add that blue cheese and I'm gonna give it a stir. Some of it's gonna melt into that sauce and get nice and creamy, and then you're gonna be left with a little bit of chunkiness, which is absolutely perfect. You want all of that beautiful flavor to melt right into your sauce. Okay. Now I'm just gonna give it a quick taste. I'm gonna say a touch of salt and just a little bit of pepper. And that sauce is gonna be perfect. And it will hold in the fridge for two to three days. So once you're done with your steak sandwich, put it on anything else you find. So we're gonna set this aside and let that hang out. And we're gonna go back and check on our onions. So while our onions finish cooking, we are gonna keep working on the toppings for our sandwich. We've got a beautiful tomato here. We're just going to cut nice, thick slices, uh, starting at the bottom, and we're gonna slice those. As you can see, we've got a nice little pile of tomatoes here. We've also got some arugula. You can use, again, whatever you have in your refrigerator. If you've got mixed greens, use mixed greens. If you don't, need, don't wanna use any greens at all, don't use any greens at all. I happen to like the brightness and the crunch and it gives a nice textural contrast in the sandwich. So we're gonna go ahead and use this uh, arugula that I've got here. Now we're gonna take our steak. This is a steak that we made earlier in the week and it didn't get eaten. And now we're gonna go ahead and reheat it very gently over at the onions. We're gonna check on them as we walk over. You can see that these onions are getting so beautifully brown. Um, all of that color is going to be so much flavor. So what I'm going to do, because again, we did not season the onions in the beginning, we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle in some salt. And then I'm going to take the pan of onions, I'm gonna nudge the onions to the side. And then I'm going to take my steak and place it into that little spot that I made. And what that's gonna do is that is going to let the steak start to heat up slowly. We don't wanna overcook this steak. We still wanna keep it beautifully medium rare to medium. Um, and if we were to put it in a pan on its own, uh, it would end up getting too hot too quick. So we're gonna let it keep, we're gonna let it warm up in the heat of these beautiful onions. We're gonna spread those onions back out and we're gonna let that cook for about another four to five minutes and just let that steak heat through and let those onions finish caramelizing. So the steak has been warming up and the onions have finished caramelizing. You can see how gorgeous and brown they are. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take our steak 
and we're gonna move it to the countertop because you always wanna let your steak rest after it comes off the heat. That way, all of the muscles and the proteins in your meat can take a rest and loosen up and you'll lose less juices. So we're gonna let that steak sit here on our counter for just a few minutes. We're gonna start putting together the rest of our sandwiches. So we've got these beautiful ciabatta rolls here. You can use any kind of roll you have. Uh, we love these, they're nice and fluffy and light. And I'm just gonna carefully open them up and I'm going to place them on my platter on the bottom. We've got our platter here. Lay down our buns, okay? We have that gorgeous blue cheese sauce that we made. That is gonna go right on the top of your buns, on the bun side, so that it will hold everything together. Then we are going to put a little bit of our arugula right on top of that sauce. Nice and crunchy and crispy. Again, you want that textural contrast. Uh, it makes your food interesting, especially when you're dealing with leftovers. You want to have different flavors and textures from the way that you ate it the first time around. And then you're going to take your tomato slices and put those right on top. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick, and then we're gonna come back and slice our steak. So we've got our steak here. This is, uh, I did not mention earlier, this is a sirloin steak. We love sirloin. It's got some nice marbling. It has a good amount of flavor, um, and it does not dry out very quickly. So it's wonderful to use as leftovers as well. Um, you treat it the right way, and it can give you many meals. Uh, what you wanna do now, this one steak is gonna make two to three sandwiches. We're gonna take our steak, and starting at the bottom where the steak gets a little bit more narrow, we're going to slice our steak at an angle. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us lots of slices. Don't worry about the fat, we can cut around the fat. It's not a big deal, we'll trim that out. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our steak and we're going to lay it out on the bottom part of our rolls. Now, this is a perfect light lunch. This is great uh, as a party dinner. If people are coming over or if you're just looking for a little bit more casual meal, you can go ahead and make these and they're fun. You can cut them into pieces. We're gonna pop the tops on our sandwiches and there you go, you have taken your leftover sirloin steak and you've made the coolest, most delicious blue cheese steak and caramelized onion sandwiches. Note to the editor, go back to where I've put the steak down on the bottom buns of the sandwiches so we can add the onions. So now that our steak is down, we're gonna go and we're gonna take these beautiful, beautiful caramelized onions that we've worked so hard on and we're gonna take them and we're gonna put them right on top of our steak. Look at those. So much flavor in those onions. And I know you all have onions sitting around in your pantry because everybody does. So this is something that you can do with your onions. Doesn't take very long and it changes them completely. And there, and there you have your leftover sirloin steak sandwiches with caramelized onions, greens, and tomatoes with a blue cheese dressing. So now we're gonna move on to our next recipe, which is mashed potato souffle. Sounds a little crazy, right? But what if you have a couple cups of mashed potatoes left over from dinner last night? It's not enough to feed your whole family, but you don't wanna waste it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take these mashed potatoes, we're gonna add some cheese, some cream, some eggs, do a little bit of magic, 
and we're gonna make them into light, puffy, cheesy souffles. So we're gonna start here with our mashed potatoes. We've let them come back to room temperature that makes them easier to handle. Okay, we're going to add in some heavy cream, some lemon zest, some grated Gruyere cheese. Again, this is what I happen to have. I love it. If you don't have Gruyere, you have Swiss, you have cheddar, whatever you have, Parmesan. I have not found a cheesy yet that doesn't work in this dish. So go ahead and stir all of this wonderful goodness into your mashed potatoes. You want to lighten these mashed potatoes up a little bit, soften them up again, and make them more manageable, more easy to work with. Now, in just a second, I'm gonna set this aside. We're going to separate eggs. We're gonna chop some parsley to put in here, and then we're gonna grab our bowl and a whisk that I have chilling in the fridge. That's actually the magic in this recipe, is having a nice cold bowl and a nice cold whisk. It's gonna give you really light and fluffy egg whites and make your souffle even better. So we'll be right back. So we have some gorgeous parsley here. I'm just going to cut the ends off. The thing about parsley stems is while you can eat them, they're not really like, delicious. So we're gonna take those and set them aside. And then the easiest way to cut them up is to take your herbs, roll them into a nice ball, and then take your knife and just run it through them. That will let you cut more herbs at once. It gets more cuts and it'll help you break your herbs down quicker and there's less likely to be a ton of bruising, which is where you start losing all the flavor. So these are gorgeous. We're gonna put those right into our bowl of mashed potatoes and I'll be right back with a cold bowl. So I told you there was some magic in this recipe. We're gonna take these potatoes, which are not very light and fluffy, and make them super light and fluffy. So what I have here is a metal bowl and a metal whisk. I've had them both sitting in the fridge for a good 15, 20 minutes because the cold bowl and the cold whisk will keep your egg whites colder longer and it'll help you whip them up faster. So I have here three eggs. I'm gonna separate these eggs. We're gonna put the yolks right into our, our mashed potatoes and the whites into our cold bowl. Now, I like to go back and forth from side to side. If you wanna use your hands, that's fine too. Whatever is easiest for you, you're gonna go ahead and separate out your three eggs. And I am going to wash my hands and we'll be right back to whisk these eggs up. Okay, so now we have our egg whites in our bowl. We are gonna take our cold whisk and we are going to whisk using a figure eight motion in our wrist. What that does is it incorporates more air into your egg whites quicker and it will help make your egg whites nice and stiff and frothy. Now, we're not really looking for stiff, stiff peaks here. We just want to get some light fluffiness. Um, really do a soft peak stage. As you can see, they're already starting to whip up nice and fluffy. That cold bowl and that cold whisk really do help. It keeps everything colder uh, and quicker to whisk. This is gonna be your arm workout for the day. As you can see now, those egg whites are getting nice and light and fluffy. They're doubling in size, and they're really starting to froth up a little bit. If you wanted to use a hand mixer for this, or a stand mixer, you absolutely could. I just find that for such a small amount of egg whites, it's almost more work to pull those out and clean them than it is to just do it this way. But by all means, if you would prefer, go right ahead and pull it out. Okay, 
Now we've got our fluffy egg whites. We're coming back to our mashed potatoes. We're gonna go ahead and stir those egg yolks and those pars that parsley right into our potato mix. Make sure you get all the way down, scoop up everything from the bottom. And now comes the fun part. As you can see, I am using a spatula. This is the correct utensil to fold our fluffy egg whites into our potato mixture. So we don't wanna lose any of this great air and lift that we have in our, in our egg whites. So we're going to take about half of our egg whites and pour them in. And then taking your, your spatula with the folding motion, start at the top, bring it down the middle and fold it over. Turn your bowl 45 degrees and you're just gonna continue to fold in that first batch until you don't see any more white streaks. It's just gonna take a minute. Once you have whisked in that first batch of egg whites, we're gonna go ahead and put in the second half and do the same thing. And you'll be able to see almost by immediately that your mashed potato mixture is becoming really light and fluffy. Much more lift than it had before. And again, we're just gonna fold that in gently. We don't wanna lose all of that beautiful lift that we just worked so hard to put in there. So again, just until you don't see any more white streaks. And then we're gonna move it into the containers that we're going to bake in. Now this can be done however you would like. If you wanna make one big souffle, um, bring a showstopper out to the table, go for it. If you wanna do really cute little individuals, which is what we're gonna do today, that's perfectly fine as well. I love the little individual ones. It makes everybody feel special, right? You get your own little souffle. So you can go ahead, as you can see, that mixture is really light and fluffy now. It's not that heavy mashed potatoes that it was when we pulled it out of the fridge when we were trying to decide what to do with it. It's so fluffy and light. So I'm just gonna set that aside for a moment. I'm gonna grab our little individual ramekins and some butter and we're gonna get all set to go in the oven. So I have here a couple of ramekins. They're just nice ceramic ramekins, individual style. I have buttered them with some softened butter. Uh, you can also spray them with hand spray, whatever you're more comfortable with. This is to make sure that our souffles rise nicely and don't get caught on the edges of your container and that they are also easy to eat. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this gorgeous fluffy potato mixture and I'm gonna fill the ramekin about three quarters of the way full. Okay, you don't wanna go too far, otherwise it's gonna bake up over the top and make a complete mess and that is the last thing we wanna do. We do not wanna lose any of this beautiful potato-ness. So I'm just gonna give them a little shake to even them out. You can go ahead, fill all the rest of your ramekins and we're gonna go ahead and put these in the oven and they're gonna bake for about 18 to 22 minutes. So while they're baking, we're gonna go ahead and start our next recipe, which is peach turnovers. So we're gonna start on our seasonal fruit tarts while our mashed potato souffles are baking. I have here some local fruit peaches. It is currently still the very end of peach season where I live, so we're gonna go ahead and use peaches. But if they're not ripe where you are, or if it's not early fall, go ahead and use whatever fruit you have sitting in your basket. You can use apples, you can use pears, you can use berries. Honestly, any combination. And if it's the dead of winter, go ahead and use frozen fruit. This is all about using what you have to make new fun things. So I'm gonna take these peaches here and I'm going to very carefully slice them and take out the pits. I'm gonna turn it and these pits should come right out. Go ahead and do the second one as well. And then now, I'm going to take my peaches, I'm gonna lay them down flat, and I'm going to slice them into slices 
about a quarter inch thick. We want them to cook down, but also still keep a little bit of their texture once we put them in our pies. So again, keeping your fingers curled under and using a rocking motion, I'm gonna go ahead and slice these peaches about a quarter of an inch thick. And again, when you get a little wobbly, tip it down and keep on going. I'm gonna go ahead and finish slicing up these peaches and we're gonna get everything in the pan. So I'm gonna take all of our sliced peaches, I'm gonna put them right in this pan. It's on low heat. Don't wanna to get too crazy with it. Wanna cook these slowly. So we're gonna put all of our peaches into this pan and we're going to sprinkle it with just a little bit of sugar. They're still really sweet, so we don't wanna to go too crazy, but we do want to start breaking their peaches down a little bit and that sugar is going to help that happen. We're also gonna put a little bit of seasoning in here. We've got some ground cinnamon, for that warm spices. I know you people normally think about cinnamon and apples, but cinnamon and peaches is amazing together. We're also gonna do the smallest touch of nutmeg, just for people to say, hmm, what's in there? Now I'm gonna turn my heat up just a little bit. We're gonna get these, up, these peaches cooking. I don't want them to go too far. I still want them to have some texture again, uh, but just until they start releasing some juices and get a little bit soft. So while those are cooking down, let's talk about our pie dough. So for this recipe, we're using refrigerated pie dough. If you have your own, go for it, okay? If you don't have pie crust, but you have puff pastry in your fridge, go for it. I'll give you those changes as we're building our little tarts. But honestly, anything that you have that is a dough basis will be perfect for this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and roll out my refrigerated pie dough. And it comes in these nice rounds. Now, I wanna create some edges. It'll help me to seal my pie, my little empanadas better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just going to really carefully trim off the tops and bottoms on each side of my pie dough to create more of a square, just to give me some edges. I'm gonna set those aside. Now, you wanna think about your little hand tarts, your little pies. We want them to be uh, triangles. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut my pie dough into long strips, and then I'm gonna cut them into squares. That way everything is gonna be nice and symmetrical when I close them up. So we're gonna start in the middle and we're going to slice my pie dough in half. And then we're going to slice each one of those pie dough, which of those sides in half. Now I'm going to come in at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to again cut my pie dough in half and then in half again. So now I have 16 pieces of pie dough. We're gonna make 16 little individual hand pies. Let's go check on our peaches. So these are starting to come along nicely. I can smell them, that cinnamon, that nutmeg, um, along with your peaches makes such a beautiful scent. It makes everything feel nice and warm. These are gonna take just a few more minutes. So in the meantime, I'm going to let them keep cooking and we're gonna go ahead and prepare our egg wash. An egg wash is simply an egg that has been beaten with a little bit of water and it acts like a glue. So we're gonna take our egg wash and we're going to brush it with a pastry crust around the edges of our pie dough. And we're gonna put our filling in and then we're gonna use that to seal it, okay? It's also gonna be a glaze on the top of our, pie, of our pies and it'll help our pies get nice and shiny. So we're gonna go ahead and crack one egg into a small bowl. Then I'm gonna grab a fork and a little bit of water and we're gonna whisk that up. So here we have our egg wash. It's uh, again, our single egg with a little bit of water and I'm whisk it together. And it's all set to be the glue for our pies.
Welcome back. As you can see, our peaches have cooked down beautifully. They're nice and soft, and they've got a little bit of glaze on them. That is from the sugar that we added in the beginning. It's created its own lovely sauce here. So now we're gonna take our peaches over to our pie crust that we have prepped out. And we are going to place peaches in the middle of each of our squares. You don't wanna overfill these. I know it's tempting. But if you overfill them, they're more likely to pop open while they're baking. And then that's just a big old mess and it's not really delicious. So just a couple pieces, a little bit less than you think you need in each square. We're gonna make four to start. You can make as many as you would like. So we've got our peaches down in the middle of our pie dough. I'm gonna take this egg wash that we made the pastry brush and we're gonna brush all the way around all four edges. Again, this is gonna be our glue. It's gonna hold everything closed and tight. I like to set things up like, um, like an assembly line and you do all of one task. You get all your pie doughs ready to go and then you line them up and you fill everything all at once and then you egg wash all at once and then you close everything all at once. Keeps you a little bit quicker and it keeps you more organized. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start closing up our turnovers. We're gonna take top end and we are going to fold it right over and we are going to close up our empanada, our little pies. You're gonna make cute little triangles you can move your filling if you need to. And you're gonna close them up. We're gonna take a fork when we're done and we're gonna crimp them closed just to be safe. Make sure everything stays in there. This is a little bit of a messy job, but it's worth it in the end. Fold it up and you're gonna seal it up. And then you're gonna take your fork and you're gonna crimp those shut. It's gonna help keep everything inside. They're a little messy, don't you worry about it because pie dough and puff pastry are very forgiving. You will see when you bake them off that everything closes up and becomes really, really beautiful. Now the next step is going to be moving them to your sheet pan. I'm gonna use my pastry cutter for this. It's got a nice flat surface and will definitely help you move everything right over to the, from your board right onto your baking sheet. Now the last step is to make these pretty for the oven. So we're gonna go ahead and take our egg wash, we're gonna paint right over the top, and then we're gonna sprinkle with a little bit of sugar. Granulated sugar along the top is gonna make it nice and sparkly and shiny and give it a little bit of crunch. So we have our pies on our baking sheet now. The last step is going to make them pretty. We're going to go ahead and brush them with some of this remaining egg white mix. And we're going to sprinkle them with some sugar. The sugar is going to make them nice and sparkly and give them a little bit of crunch and texture when they come out of the oven. It doesn't have to be special sugar. We're just gonna use some of our granulated sugar right here. Again, it's just to give it a little bit of texture and a little bit of visual interest when they come out of the oven. Now, these are ready but before these can go in the oven, we need to pull our, our mashed potato souffles out.
These potato souffles have been in the oven for about 22 minutes, so let's take a look. Those are gorgeous. As you can see, we can do them in any size, and they've got just a tiny bit of browning on top. They've puffed up beautifully, and they are the perfect mashed potato treats. Now those pies are gonna be in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. We'll give them a check and we'll pull them when they are starting to brown and get nice and crispy. Welcome back. And our pies are out of the oven and aren't they gorgeous? That little bit of sugar on them, I told you it's gonna make them sparkle and shine. Uh, the fruit is beautifully, beautifully cooked in there. And it didn't take all that long. You had everything in your house already. So again, just a reminder, we made these beautiful sirloin steak sandwiches with caramelized onions and a blue cheese sauce. We took your leftover mashed potatoes and we made a cheesy, fluffy mashed potato souffle and your beautiful, beautiful seasonal fruit tarts. Everything came from your fridge, everything is brand new, and everything is gonna be really exciting to eat. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Chef Nicole. Follow me at lovinplates.com or on Instagram at lovinplatesnj. And next time we'll be using your leftover chicken and making a million new and exciting recipes.